Before Rather, Brokaw, and Jennings, there were H.V. Kaltenborn and Gabriel Heater and Lowell Thomas. They were radio news commentators, and they sat before a microphone and painted images of the world with only their voices. That generation is gone now, except for one. Paul Harvey is not a relic from another age, though. With 22 million loyal listeners a week on more than 1,300 radio stations, he has a larger audience than many reporters appearing on television. Even if you're not a regular listener, you probably know what he sounds like. Maybe you were driving across country, switching through the stations, when you came to that voice. For the 12 o'clock hour. Lawrence Singleton raped and mutilated a teenage girl hitchhiker, chopped off her arms with an axe and left her to die on a California roadside. That was 1979. Singleton, now living on Social Security, has been trying to sell his story for a book or for a movie. You know, it's just a little bitty crack in Mrs. Bockerman's driveway in Kennesaw, Nebraska. I mean a teensy crack. You couldn't push a pencil through it, and yet out of that crack, two watermelon vines are growing, and they've produced seven big watermelons. She still can drive around them, but she can no longer get in the garage door. One thing more, today's bumper sneaker. This was seen by Marshall Miller in Stone Mountain, Georgia. It says, vote yes on preparation H. Paul Harvey... Good day. Paul Harvey news and comment has been... Paul Harvey, at the age of 70, is having a lot of good days this year. In September, in his home base of Chicago, 900 diners paid $150 a plate to honor Harvey and raise money for a broadcasting museum. Some in the crowd were seeing for the first time the face that went with the familiar voice. And tonight's guests of honor, Mr. and Mrs. Paul Harvey. He has the five highest rated programs in network radio, and his new long-term contract with ABC is rumored to pay him $5 million a year. His wife, Angel Harvey, is his business partner and manager, but prefers to stay in the background. It's a family business. Their only child, Paul Jr., is the announcer on Paul's program. Some of Paul Harvey's most famous fans also showed up, like the Reverend Billy Graham. Paul has been supportive of so many good and patriotic causes in America. He has received more honors and civic awards than anybody in the country, including Bob Hope. Bob is a little jealous. Paul, you are truly one of the most remarkable communicators of the 20th century. And on this, your special night, Nancy and I offer our heartfelt congratulations. One reason Paul and Angel are not seen out on the town all that often is that he gets up too early. His day begins at 3.25 a.m. with oatmeal, juice, and vitamins at his suburban Chicago home. His two vacation homes in Missouri and Arizona have built-in radio studios. But in Chicago, he goes to an office. Even though he's one of the richest men in broadcasting, for the next three hours, unlike his network counterparts, he will work totally alone. Our network uh, news anchors, these are corporate efforts, necessarily. They are corporate efforts. Mine is just a little one-man operation where I get to, sh I get to shave the board of directors every morning, sit, <laughs> sit down, pound every word into a typewriter, for better or worse. Good morning, Kevin. It must be awfully hard to maintain that level of effort after so many years. Well, not really. Good gracious, Bob, I have, wow, I have 200 million people staying awake all night doing hilarious and heroic things for me to talk about in the morning. I, I, I can't miss. <laughs> Harvey reads the same newswire copy that goes to radio stations all over the country, but he selects and filters and rewrites and makes it his own. He feels what he actually does is practice a lost art called radio. I've never ever seen a picture on television or ever anywhere else that compares to the phenomenal pictures my brain can paint. I think radio is the ultimate visual medium. There is nothing anybody can do on that flat two-dimension screen. Nothing that compares to the phenomenal pictures that are painted by your mind's eye, stimulated by our beautiful language. 
By 729, music is being used to test the network line to New York. <clears throat> Wolf 1234, 1234, farm exports this year. This will be a five minute show. Later, he'll do 15 minutes. Engineer Benny Benninghoff, you may have guessed, has done this before. Paul Harvey, news and comment, brought to you by <coughs> Scramblers. Now, Paul Harvey News. Good morning, Americans. A beautiful day across the whole USA. A little rain in the Pacific Northwest, but they can use it. Oh, Dukakis during the debate said that a jobless Houston man could not afford health insurance so that his son could play Little League Baseball uh, whoops. <laughs> now, the fact is, Little League itself offers players accident insurance for any youngster who really wants to play. He can play. I've heard you over the years do stories, and after the broadcast, I'll know exactly what your opinion was on those stories. And then I think back and realize you didn't say anything other than exactly what was in the newspaper, but you paused and you milked and you, <laughs> you kind of twisted without changing the words. Uh, I think what you're describing that? is what in television you all get away with as the so-called raised eyebrow. <laughs> uh, one of the uh, news writers in, in the, one of the Chicago papers said of Paul, he's the only man that can read the news with complete bias. <laughs> Hooper White is a Chicago advertising executive who has been a friend of Harvey's since they worked together in the 40s. Um, to anyone who says that the news media, uh, both radio and television, is slanted to the east and canted to the left, uh, he is the Midwest answer to that. The only time he ever turns left is when he's in his automobile. <laughs> he knows uh, that there is another part of the country west of the Hudson. Harvey says the picture of Ronald Reagan is the only presidential portrait he's ever had on his wall. But his politics have always been conservative. His first radio job was in his hometown of Tulsa in 1933. Then came a series of small town radio stations before he got his big break in Chicago. He supported Joseph McCarthy's anti-communist campaign in the 1950s, but in recent years has denounced McCarthyism. He supported the Vietnam War and then reversed himself in a famous broadcast in 1970 in which he said, I love you, Mr. President, but you are wrong. Among listeners today, Harvey seems to be known less for his politics than for his flag-waving good news attitude and his unusual mix of the important and the trivial. Herbie Riston, Beckley, West Virginia, is cute as can be, has a pug nose, darling eyes, and a piercing scream. So Herbie, the family's chimpanzee, has <laughs> gone through so many babysitters, the Ristons have lost count. The last one... He just led to the door and pushed her out. Well, he's more dramatic. That's, he's that's very Paul dramatic. is an entertainer. He's, he's a, an he's actor. A very, very good entertainer. He's an actor. He's, he's a is. very good entertainer. Paul, please. I not say that. Not. Frank Harden and Jackson Weaver have a popular radio show in Washington, D.C. Paul Harvey News always comes in the middle of it. Occasionally, we kid him about various things that he says, like we not unusual to have us refer to him as being to the right of Attila the Hun. <laughs> and people will call up and say things like, he's a better patriot than you are, <laughs> and hang up. Things like that happen. So you know he's got great loyalty behind him. Paul Harvey and newscaster, do those two go no. together? Oh, no. 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 no, 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 not at all. No. Because what he's saying isn't really news. Every, every day over the various wire services come feature material funnies in the news, oddities in the news, and Paul uses these. Now, sometimes it's a big news story, like if the Titanic sunk, he'd have to mention it. <laughs> Would it be the lead story? Not necessarily. There's a little girl with a kitty that lost her kitty in Chicago. That would be first. Yes, yeah. that's right, as many little girls have. There's something in Harvey's manner that says he believes what he says, and you should too. And he learned early in his career that same quality that sold the news could also sell toothpaste, Hello, lawnmowers, and car batteries. Stand by for news. You have any idea how hot it gets under the hood of your car? Harvey writes the commercials himself from suggestions the sponsors give him. 
and he tells yes. listeners these are all products he has used himself. And if other leaf and grass blowers have disappointed you, listen. This thing generates a windstorm greater than hurricane velocity. It's just his voice. He just sounds like you could believe what he's really saying. Sharon Pepperman lives in Beavertown, Pennsylvania, where she and some of her co-workers at Sailor Shirt Factory never miss Paul Harvey. May I talk you out of something? If you have one of those cheap imported thermos containers which keeps hot things hot and cold things cold only for a while and only sometimes, let's trade up. The Aladdin Stanley Steel Thermos, the American classic, offers an owner a degree of pride you just don't find in any other. So you heard him advertise this on the radio, and then you went out and bought it. Yeah, right? we all got one the same year. So I guess you do believe him. Yeah. Right? And if we didn't, you know, we wouldn't have the Stanley Thermos. <laughs> didn't you think, well, this is just another commercial. Everybody says their product is great on radio or on television. He's we very were... selective about the products he advertises. That's one thing that helped me to want to buy one of these. Yeah, uh -huh. careful. I saw you squinching up your nose because you have tasted imitation eggs. <laughs> Once was enough. Well, this new product called Scramblers now we're talking real eggs. Scramble. I can't. I, I, I can't look down on the, on the commercial sponsors of these broadcasts. Too often they have very, very important messages to put across. Without advertising, my goodness, we'd still be in this country what Russia mostly still is—a nation of bearded bicyclists with bo. <laughs> But surely you see the point that some news people make about remaining objective. Maybe I don't take myself quite so seriously as, as some of these folks do who imagine that they can be objective. I think in an era where we're so full of tricks and uh, gimmicks and um, uh, flash frames and, and film and, and uh, all sorts of things that originated in computers, this man seems to be some sort of a, of a steady ongoing force. I guess I haven't cared much about whether it's categorized by some as corny or less than artistic. I, I, I just have to kind of do my thing and, and uh, let it prove itself. Paul Harvey, good day.